YouTube, Carlo here. Welcome to the vlog. In today's episode, I decided to do a quick Q&A. So I asked on Instagram uh, for you guys to throw in your questions. And today's episode, I'll answer several of them. So we'll talk about where to best invest your 10,000 pesos. I'll talk about what my very first Ultra Boost is. I'll talk about NFTs. We'll talk about cooking, <laughs> maybe a separate cooking channel. So all of that, that'll be in today's episode and more. So keep on watching. Let's go. Carlo, what is your first ever Ultra Boost? So I actually still have it. So this is the Adidas Ultra Boost. I think it's a 2.0. Uh, I got this. I'm not sure if it was in uh, Madrid, Barcelona or Japan. So I didn't buy this in the Philippines. And this one has been restored twice. So that's why the Boost is still a bit white despite being here for a while now. And it's been cleaned multiple times. But unfortunately, it's now triggering my allergic rhinitis because this pair actually was in the cat room. So grabe yung... Oh my God, grabe yung cat hair, tumama sa mata ko. But anyway, yan guys, this is my first ever Adidas Ultra Boost. Now the second question that came up a lot, it was asked by several people including our good friend Christian, aka Sneaker Talk, separate channel for cooking. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> So the next question is where to invest my 10,000 pesos. Actually, and dami sa inyo, there's so many of you who ask this question, which tells me that a lot of my viewers can actually invest 10,000 pesos of their money, which is good. Fantastic. That's awesome. So I'll answer that to the best of my abilities. Now, when it comes to investing 10,000 pesos, you have to ask yourself, what is your goal? And what is your time frame? Meron ka bang matagal ng time frame for your 10,000? Or short term yung goal mo at mas malaki yung gusto mong gains kagad? The thing about investing long term, or sabihin natin you're going to buy stocks, you're going to buy uh, crypto, is that you are not too sure plus the gains might not be as big. Because for example, if you put 10,000 pesos uh, in a fund or in a stock and it just it just increases by 6 to 10% in a year, you just earn an additional 1,000 pesos from your 10,000 pesos. And I'm not sure, and I don't think that you'll be happy with just earning an additional 1,000 pesos after waiting for so long, right? And pagdating naman sa crypto, the possibility of it going up is super high, but the possibility of it crashing and going all the way down to zero or 2,000 is just as high. Because it is super volatile. So if I had 10,000 pesos, I would I would do this. I would do two of these things. So one of these two things. So number one, I would make something, use that 10,000 as a capital and then sell it. Because it's so much easier to sell now because of digital at a profit. So ask yourself, saka ba magaling? What are you good at? Are you good at cooking? Are you good at sabihin natin, making art? Are you good at cleaning shoes? What is it that service or that product that you can create with the 10,000 pesos that you can eventually sell online? Diba? So I think that one will give you much, much higher returns and much, much higher uh, profits immediately also, not just in the sh in the midterm, but even in the short term. And to, to manage your expenses and your risk, pwede ka magpa-pre-order. So for example, magaling ka magluto. Order ka na, try to cook like a really nice uh, pan of lasagna, take a picture of it, upload it on IG, and then ask for pre-orders. So that alam mo talaga ilan yung papasok para hindi ka gagastos and then you lose all the money when people don't buy. It also allows you to gauge how many orders you should prepare. And then don't spend that money on a stupid stuff. Keep that money and put it back into the business and keep on growing it until your 10,000 becomes 100,000, 150,000, 500,000, and then a million pesos. That's how you do business. A second way of doing things would be to flip stuff. So sabihin natin you're able to get uh, good deals on sneakers or toys or cards and you have a very good pulse for the market uh, then, and you know where to buy low and where you can secure pairs or items at a low price, then all you have to do is to flip them and sell them at a higher price with your 10,000. And same process from 10,000, going 15,000, 20,000. Keep on investing the money. Don't use the money and spend it on useless stuff. The key in building a business is preserving and using the profits to grow the business and not just to pay yourself so that you can do whatever. By the way, before you start thinking of investing money, guys, always remember to build your initial uh, emergency fund first. So, kung pumpitin ninyo, magkano yung monthly expenses ninyo, multiply that by, by six, so siguro six months worth. Pag meron ka na nun in the bank, secure, at hindi mo gagalawin unless emergency, that would be the best time to think about investing. So, the next question is, Carlo, uh, what are your thoughts on NFTs? Ah, that's a pretty interesting question. Well, uh, I did buy an NFT. And guys, so today we're going to buy our first ever NFT. And syempre, dahil Philippines, let's support the Filipino artist. This is Team, team Manila 
Rizal Gold. So, 20 editions, dalawa na lang natitira. I will be buying this gold Rizal coin. Ah, my first digital art. So, buy now. I understand. Continue. Purchase. Send transaction with your wallet. Confirm. Yay! You have successfully purchased. Rizal Gold from Team Manila. I bought one, which is the Team Manila NFT. I think it's a Rizal Gold coin. Uh, I bought it. I have it. But I honestly don't know the the point. <laughs> to be straightforward. So, ang ganda niyo tingnan. Nasa browser ko. But that's about it, right? So, it's, it's really giving your support to an artist or to a project that you really believe in. There are NFTs that have functions, so check out the, the new NFT of Gary Vaynerchuk. There are NFTs that are just nice to look at. Uh, and yun yung mga parang interesting thing. There, there was even an NFT recently released uh, by Staple, Jeff, Jeff Staple. I think it's like a robotic pigeon. And the price is actually preserving. And mukhang tataas pa siya. So it's a very new space. I'm exploring it. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm definitely not an expert at it yet, but I am trying. It did to cryptocurrency. Tinanong sa akin ni Andre Peralta, top three coins in my portfolio. Uh, I have Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. Those are my three biggest uh, collections at uh, collections positions in cryptocurrency. Jay Mahusay asks, Carlo, what is your most useful skill? Most valuable. I think my most useful skill is that I am okay to fail. As in, I am mentally okay to fail. And that allows me to keep on trying. Because I don't really care what people think. And I don't really mind failing as long as I learn. So, hindi ako yung parang, shocks pumalpak, I'm so depressed, I'm so sad, I'm parang devastated. Hindi ako ganun. When I fail, it's like, okay, I failed. Any learnings? What can I do better? How can I improve? What are the things that will make me do this business better? What are the things that will allow me to make money more? What are the things that I could have done to deliver a better presentation? Gets nyo? So, if you have that kind of mindset na every time you fail, it's, it's not bad to fail anymore because it's just a step closer to success because you keep on improving. So if I have one key skill that I think has propelled me in my career, it's that. It's the ability to fail well. Because I'm the best to fail. I didn't do well in school. I didn't do well in school. Uh, I, I, wasn't, I, I didn't do well in several jobs that I had prior to this one. But it's always that desire to be better. And even the businesses that I have now, they're not perfect. They're a lot of But it's, it's really just constantly learning and evolving and trying to get better one day at a time. And knowing that every failure is a step closer to becoming even more successful. So yun, yun ang aking number one skill, I think. Here's a nice question by Mikio Roman. Do you consider yourself a hoarder? or a collector. I'd like to think of myself as a collector kasi I sell actually a lot of the sh Actually, di nga, I'm not a hoarder or a collector. I think I'm a businessman. <laughs> kasi, I, to be honest, I buy a lot of shoes. Not to hoard them or to even collect them. I buy a lot of shoes just to have content on this channel. And if you notice, ngayon, hindi na kasing dalas yung sneaker content because I've been buying a lot of shoes. Kasi parang wala lang. I've, I've been trying to experiment, try to different things, and I just try to buy the stuff that I really want versus buying just stuff just to review and feature for you guys. So, I don't see myself as a hoarder. Maybe more of a collector. Uh, I buy what I like. I buy what I want. I keep them. And if I don't like to get them more, wala ko masyadong emotional attachment, I can sell them. Sama Bella asks, uh, what's the best quote that has stuck to you? Uh, it's from Albert Einstein. And well, parang the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and yet expecting the same, this different results. So I guess that dives into my skill that I mentioned earlier na I am so okay with failing as long as I learn new things so I can try things differently. How to vote wisely? This is a really good question. You know, voting is a very personal thing kasi we all have different issues and we all have different pains in life. And voting for a candidate should be reflective of yung position ng candidate na yon and how that candidate will solve or affect the issues that we have in life. So for example, if ako, I'm really keen on the position of candidates on the West Philippine Sea and China. That for me is super important. It may not be important for you guys. It may not be important for a lot of you. But for me, that is a very important thing. So it, it has a lot to do with my upbringing. Uh, my, my, my grandfather used to be the Secretary of Foreign Affairs. Uh, and I just really... 
parang that that love of country na parang parang ah hayaan lang natin mangyari yun sa atin parang hindi hindi matik eh di ko matik the secondly obviously how how to handle the pandemic how to take a more scientific based approach i also want to take a look at how they will improve the economy and how they will help businesses and and stuff like that so iba-iba tayo mga position so what's important to vote wisely is for you to take a look at all the issues that matter the most to you and then pag-aralan niyo yung mga kandidato kung ano ba yung positions nila sa mga issue na yun kasi hindi pwedeng bu- boto nyo lang sila just because trip nyo or just because feeling nyo siya yung tama nang hindi kayo nagre-research. It should not be personality based. It should be issue and policy based. Bumoto kayo based on what they are saying their stand is and how they will act. Not because feeling nyo cool siya. You know, I have, you know, I have so many more questions that I want to answer, but this video will end up taking like 20 minutes. So what I'll do is I'll do a part two. So please watch out for the part two of this Q&A in the coming days ahead. Anyway, let me know what you think of the questions. If you guys want more, if you want to ask more questions, uh, please just comment down below and I, maybe I'll pick a few more questions and I'll answer them in the next video. Would love to keep this Q&A thing going on. It's fun for me. I'm, I'm, I hope it's fun and informative for you guys. And with that said, this is Carlos signing out. I hope you guys all have an amazing weekend up ahead. Make sure to drop by again tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. I have two vlogs coming up that's super dope, super nice. And I hope you guys will support and check them out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Again, don't forget to comment down below. Peace. God bless. What's up? Boom.